everyone. I'm Linda Nickel and welcome to the Happiness Hour. My goal here is to help us all connect, inspire, and create. And every week, I invite a speaker to share a bit of inspiration, creativity, and their expertise in photography. If you haven't checked out the schedule for our upcoming presentations, be sure to check out the list on my website at lindanickel.com. Under Happiness Hour, you'll find the links to previous sessions on my YouTube channel. So please subscribe, like, and share. Aaron Randall is a coach and motivational speaker. His musings can be found at admiliorracoaching.com. But on Wednesday nights, you'll, you can find her here as my backseat driver. So say hello, Aaron. Hello, Aaron. And I'm not certain who I'm motivating, but we'll go with that. So thank you. You do. You're kind of like in the background. You know, occasionally yeah. you tap me on the shoulder and say, do this, do that. And, you know, just yeah. do it. All right. All right. Um, my guest tonight is Valerie Hoffman, who is joining us from Reading, Pennsylvania. Valerie is a nature, macro, landscape photographer that hosts photography treks in her area. And when we come out from under COVID, I hope that you'll be able to join her on some of her destination workshops. So keep an eye on her website, ValerieHoffmanPhotography.com, as dates get added. This is Valerie's fourth session with us. So if you missed the other three, you can find them on the YouTube channel under Linda Nichols Happiness Hour. In tonight's presentation, Architecture is Art, Valerie will walk through several photographic case studies and discuss how composition, lens choice, and exposure options can be used to create compelling images. By taking the time to notice architectural details, you'll get to know a place's character. And with your camera, you can preserve and bring it to photographic life. So welcome back to the Happiness Hour, Valerie. Thank you, Linda. No bad stories. I'm, I'm impressed. No, no, no. We're grateful. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, let's just let's just be honest and and be this full disclosure. Valerie is somebody that um, I talk to weekly, sometimes a couple of times a day. You know, if a thought kind of comes through my head, ah, I need to like just text Valerie and I'll just pick up the phone and and call her. So we have this banter, and I sometimes wonder if we're like these sisters that just pick on each other constantly because that's what it feels like sometimes on my end. So I'm super, super grateful that I ran into you a couple of years ago and um, you haven't said no to me when I asked you to come and do presentations. And so for that, I will forever be grateful. And, you know, I, I know that people are excited that uh, you're back and at some point we're gonna get you get you down here in Texas and hopefully we'll we'll be able to get a few um, introductions in person with some of these people that I think you've made friends with. So with that, I'm gonna pass it to you so we can get started. All right. And thank you, Linda. And yes, no, we uh we get along great. She's been a big uh push to get me going in a lot of different directions <laughs> hello so Aaron. was that a good that was, so that, nice. a, that was so nice push was not the word that she'd like to say guys <laughs> not at all but no it's been great so um yeah so i'll just share my screen all right so how do we look looks good looks good Okay, so you guys know, well, first, before I even start, I want to say, um, I don't know if the majority of you are in Texas, but, you know, my, my heart and the rest of the countries um, really went out to you with um, everything that you guys went through, especially not being used to it at all. Um, you know, I hope that no one sustained any really bad damage or anything. I know it was real tough, so... Um, and now you're all whining that you're hot a couple days later, which is just crazy. But um, I'm glad you're all safe and got through that. So um, if you've seen any of the other presentations before, you would know that I try to um, have help people to see more creatively and to see, you know, to come up with different views, to not just come up with, you know, the standard, the boring, whatever, um, but maybe to help you to see or look at things differently. 
So tonight with architecture, and I, I kind of started a couple things with, you know, throwing as art on the end. So this is certainly not a uh, presentation on the right way to photograph architecture because that's very detailed and you want your lines all straight and, you know, this and that. And, and that's not necessarily what you're going to see here. So it's more my artistic spin on things. And it's just over the last couple of years that I really began, uh, you know, falling in love with architecture and pursuing beautiful buildings, churches, whatever to photograph. So I started with this one. I'm not in China. As you can see um, on the sign here, this is a right in the city of Reading. So I'm from Reading, Pennsylvania. And I won't go into the story because Linda is going to, you know, make me keep moving along with my images. But um, Reading has a small mountain. We're at the base of a mountain. And this pagoda, which way back in the 20s, I think, was supposed to be a, uh, a nice hotel and it never went to be. So now the city of Reading owns it. And it's really an iconic thing. People go here all the time. Um, so it's definitely beautiful to photograph. I especially like it at sunset and at blue hour. But one of the things through this presentation, I'll have different places and, and kind of walking you through, I think composition is really the key to, um, you know, some great images and just help you maybe to see my thought process or just things that I focus on. Um, you know, you want to look around for different views. So, you know, a minute ago, I was up on this little, um, whatever little island that they have right there to get that higher view. Well, now I'm down below and with a wide angle. And I chose this um, because this was actually one of the most amazing sunsets um, I had seen in a long time. And so I wanted to incorporate the, the pagoda in with it. So I had a super wide angle lens and was right up there um, to get that. And here's a little bit more of it. So in your architecture, um, you know, you want to just look for elements. You don't always have to show the whole building. Um, but maybe just pieces and parts or whatever is, you know, compelling to you. And in this case, I did wanted to show that this was kind of behind the pagoda. Oh, a little fun fact about the pagoda is that on Christmas Eve, the lights blink at nine o'clock several times to tell the kitties that Santa is on his way so that he should, they should all go to bed. So that is a little fun fact. So one of the things um, that I love about the pagoda is just the, um, the design elements on it, the gold lines that are on the side, kind of all around, it's real pretty. So since that caught my eye, that's something that I want to focus in on and just make it almost an abstract, but just have that part so that you know it's all about that. Um, and, you know, even here, just moving around, going down below it and shooting up. If you, um, anybody can catch it this was a really long exposure i think it was like 15 seconds on a really windy day to kind of get that really softness up in the sky so um you know just trying to show this in a bunch of different um i don't know why that does it every now and then where you lose your your mouse but um in a bunch of different um angles and things so I wanted to use this because there were some fun things here. We just did a photography workshop on Saturday and then another one two weeks before that at the Historic Lansdowne Theater, which is right outside of Philadelphia. And um, it caught fire in the 80s. It's 1920s era theater and it's just gorgeous inside, but it's been in a state of arrested decay. And now they've raised enough funds to begin restoring it, which should happen this summer. So um, just to walk you through some thought process, here's the front. So if you're going to photograph any building, um, you know, it's always good to get the big picture and then kind of maybe lead people inside. So even though this is, you know, in the state of arrested decay and you can see, you know, all the paint peeling and everything, it really is gorgeous. Um, now, and you'll notice that some of these look maybe artsy or, you know, a lot of these are HDR images. For this particular scene, um, you needed seven stops to go from brightest to darkest to even get detail. And in this particular one, there's more detail that could have been had in that light. So um, a lot of images that might look like this are merged together in Photomatix Pro. Um, but going through there. Now, one of the things that I like to do 
on the creative end is use a super wide angle lens. And in this case, um, this is a Rokinon fisheye. And I just love the perspective and the roundedness that it gives to a, a relatively small theater. Um, so one of the things that most attracted me to this theater was that ceiling and that light. And so I wanted to focus on um, just some different compositions that would kind of bring that together. And just like, you know, I talked about before, leading lines are huge for composition. And so you want to try and find, um, you know, nice compositions where the lines kind of, whether you have symmetry or they're leading somewhere or whatever. Um, that help tell the story. So just moving around, give you some different ideas of how you might compose an image um, inside a place that's kind of chaotic and, um, you know, in its state of decay. And then a fisheye view, just looking straight up to the light. <clears throat> Excuse me. And one of the really neat things is the scaling on here. You know, a lot of the old buildings, I don't know, you know, what you guys have near you, just really have some neat details. And when you find a place that has details like that, just really work on focusing in on those and try to emphasize them. But I just love the chandelier. So there's a couple extra pictures in there. And then, you know, since I talk about making things as art, this is just a really dark old backstage um, place. And for the workshop, um, one of the helpers that I had brought in some colored lights and we kind of lit it up neat and made it kind of gritty. And that just kind of helped tell the story more of this place. And then one of the fun things um, that we did afterwards, the a couple of weeks ago when I was there, I found a puddle. And whenever you see a puddle, there's a reflection somewhere. Um, so I worked really hard to get a, a picture with the reflection of the theater in it. Um, so here's an example. After this workshop, a bunch of us just spent a lot of time trying to capture this with cars coming right at us. We were in a parking lot and constant traffic and everything. But definitely, um, if you can incorporate puddles or, or reflections, I should say, into your scenes, they can really help um, you know, just make it a, a much neater, different image. Because you may see the front of this theater a million times, but not the reflected image. And you really, if you've never photographed um, like buildings and things reflected in the water, you have to have your camera. You can see it in this shot. That's why I left it in, like basically on the ground, almost in the puddle to get, you know, to really get that whole reflection. All right, so since this has some funny stories, um, another place that I had wanted to see was the Hard Rock Casino. casino. And I went over to visit Christy and we were going on a workshop to um, that abandoned airplane place. And so we were walking on the boardwalk. This is right in Atlantic City on the boardwalk. And for this, I used a telephoto lens to kind of compress the buildings together um, to give kind of a very different perspective. So what I really wanted to see in this uh, casino was this guitar that's on the ceiling. And I'd seen some neat pictures and I'd never been in here before. So this was our first view as we came in and it's up on the ceiling. And you see that they have this whole crazy light show going on around and the, the stairs are all lit up and everything. So, you know, trying to figure out how do you get a good view. So we're walking around. Here's a different view from up top and looking. And you can see there's a huge... Um, gap between this hanging guitar and then some more lights and, and what's actually on the ceiling. Um, and you'll notice too that the lights keep changing so I keep shooting because it's just painting a whole new picture with all the different colors. So finally I decided to go downstairs um, and if you look I like this image and I am using so I at this point I'm using an Olympus mirrorless camera and um, a Rokinon fisheye lens to be able to get, you know, this whole scene in. And I don't like this gap that you just saw a minute ago up above the guitar there. And so I get a little closer, just trying to figure out, well, how can I, you know, get a shot right, you know, without that in there. So I'm getting closer underneath. Um, and then finally, you know, I get almost directly underneath. And again, I loved, you know, all these different colors. So I just kept shooting. 
Um, but here's what I was really looking for, but I still couldn't get then all the colors and everything around it. So I said to our other friend, Deb, I said, I'm going in, you might want to get a picture. And so I went right up to the base of this, um, the escalator and the steps there. And I laid flat on my back and was just sitting there shooting and shooting. And I was having the time of my life getting all these great different, you know, as the lights change and everything. And then all of a sudden I heard this, <clears throat> And I looked up and there was this huge security guard um, just kind of hovering over me and he just shook his head at me. And that was the end of my, my shooting. So come on. So there I am caught in the act. And that was the last shot that we had in here. We didn't get kicked out though. But, and Linda, feel free to stop me anywhere if you have um, any questions. I have one. Um, I was going to hold it, but let me, I'll throw it out here so you can think about it or maybe just answer it. Karen wanted to know, can you talk about how you make sure you are straight on with your shots um, or do you take multiples, you know, near the front? Um, so you mean whether my horizon's straight or not? I think she's talking about, uh, well, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming. Or dead center. Right. Okay. Um, that is a challenge. And, you know, Karen and I were talking about that a like a couple days ago, looking at an image. Um, you want to be dead center on something like this, because if you're off by the slightest bit and you are using a wide angle, which your phone would be, or in this case, this, this fisheye, none of your, all your angles will be really wonky, all your lines. So I just try and, you know, I'm always on a tripod for most of these and I'll look in and I'll make sure that my camera, um, I've used the level and I make sure that is completely level. And then I just will look to the right and the left and see if it's an equal amount of you know, whatever on each side, like in this case with the stage. And if you look and it's maybe a hair off, but you can see that I have almost the exact same spacing, you know, by the door and everything. Um, but that is a huge thing with architecture that you do want to be kind of level and kind of straight on unless you're trying to make it, you know, have awkward angles. Did that, did that help? I think so. Okay. Um, this is a state theater in Easton, and this architect is also the one that did the Lansdowne Theater. But this theater is in action, and it's in its glory. And um, it, it's very small, even though it doesn't look it here. And with the fisheye lens, I was able to um, capture just this really neat, I love these lines um, and all the you know, kind of the carvings or whatever you would call that, that was in the lower part of the ceiling where the balcony would be. So normally you'd never be able to get um, any kind of image like this unless you had a super wide angle lens, or maybe even if you had a wide angle and then did a panorama shot of it. So it's just kind of a very different perspective that I think is kind of a, you know, a neat look. And then, you know, just messing around a little more. So I moved a little further front so I didn't have so much of this ceiling here because that kind of bugged me when I did the first shot and then get a little closer. And, you know, even though that's straight apart, I mean, straight across that ceiling, it almost feels like a framing to it. Um, if anyone asks so about, you know, how did I get these stars while we're here? So there's not a star filter, but these were... Um, at f11 and on that lens I will always get stars on the small points so whether you like that or not you might want to decide but most all of the architectural shots will be at at least f8 so that I have a good um, amount you know of depth of field is the f11 on that specific lens because I I guess I've been told f16 is where I need to start yeah, it really depends on the lens. So F16 is probably where you would see it on the norm, like a 24 to 105 or whatever. But on this lens and also my, I use a Tokina 11 to 16, and that gets amazing starbursts. So each lens is going to be different depending on how many um, aperture blades it has. And the more, the better generally to get that neat starburst. So... so so I would just play around and, and stop down to wherever you get it on that lens. Since we're talking about lenses, uh, Mika mm -hmm. wants to know, what's your favorite fisheye lens? Um, well, you mean brand or uh, 
focal like how about both of them just do both well the ones that i've chosen the focal length is depending on the camera so um, I was shooting a Canon 7D Mark II, so that's a crop sensor camera. And so uh, the fish I had was a Rokinon 7 millimeter. I knew I should have had them sitting right here. Um, but then now that I've kind of slowly started migrating over to Olympus, um, you have to, that's different. And that's a micro four thirds camera, and that's a different lens. So it's based on just what works for the camera. Okay. Um, can I squeeze in another question? Sure. Uh, Barbara wants to know, how do you deal with white balance? And she has trouble with interior shots. So she doesn't know what temperatures to choose. That's a great question. So, um, and, and again, that's why I'm calling this as art because if I was trying to do pictures for the brochure, they would not like this because it's much warmer. Um, I would start, you can start with auto white balance and see what it does, um, or, you know, go pick the white balance that matches most closely to the lighting in there. So uh, in a lot of cases, tungsten would be the lighting for the surrounding lights, and that's why they're yellower, but the stage light is daylight. So you're going to have mixed lighting. And if you're actually doing something like real estate where you're being paid and it should be accurate, you may have to mess with it in Photoshop to get it all to look like, you know, balanced correctly. Did that answer question? Um, but wherever you can start on auto white balance. Um, that's what I think most of my guys used in the theater. You could put it on daylight if you want it to have a warmer, a yellower cast. I am shooting in raw, so, um, you know, I can tweak all those, however, um, you know, in, in processing. Yeah, Don was asking, do you use a custom white balance? I don't. Um, when I shot weddings, I would, you know, so you could make sure that the brides, you know, bridesmaids dresses are the right teal and everything else. Um, and if I was doing uh, like flowers or anything else where I was doing it um, for a magazine or something where it was very critical that the exact accurate color, then I might do it. But for this, not at all. Um, and, but just like with flowers, I'll shoot in daylight or cloudy, depending on the lighting there to make sure that it's as close to um, natural as possible. But for theaters and things like this, I tend to like them a little warmer. And maybe if it's abandoned, maybe a little cooler. So um, now this is from the front looking back and it's a very different view. So now you can see I was standing before like right down here and this is that part that I said looked like the framing. Um, so it's a very different perspective. I'm standing, I think on the stage for this and just the ceiling was gorgeous. So um, again, just point it up at that and then pointing straight out. And again, with the fisheye, you get that curved, um, you know, look. Now, I don't particularly like the fisheye lenses that give you the rounded, like you're looking through a peephole. Um, I know Canon has, I'm not sure which ones um, that do that. So I prefer the ones that, you know, you get that little curved effect, but you don't have the vignetting on the sides. All right, so this is just, um, we're now, near Allentown. And this is the outside of a library on the Lehigh campus. And this has just got some beautiful architecture inside. So um, when you approach the door, you know, I made sure I don't know what caused me to look up, but looking up, you know, and people probably, I'm going to go back to this, just walk by, you know, that, oops, jump around, um, walk by that all the time. But when I looked up, you have all these neat little um, carvings with all these faces. And I just, again, loved the arches, you know, so looking for curved lines and leading lines. Um, so just stopped and got kind of a close up of that. And then one of the neat things in this library is this very old section is kind of rounded and has an amazing rotunda. So um, I've brought a couple groups here. They just love the looks of this. Um, I'll even say, and not too bad, but half these lights were not lit and I lit them up in, you know, Lightroom with the adjustment brush because I couldn't stand that. But, um, you know, here's just some different angles so you could go up higher and, you know, get the different view that way. 
oops, forgot to light that one. And then, you know, kind of do a looking to the left shot, looking from the right. So, you know, don't just pick one view and be done with it. I would say like with any other subject, fully explore it compositionally, because um, you never know how many different unique angles and images you can come away with. Now here's the, so turning around, this is one of the things that's really beautiful is this glass, um, the stained glass in the ceiling. So trying to get some images of that. And this library is very tiny. So we're almost laying on the floor. Um, and it really bugs me that this isn't completely symmetrical, but this is right against um, the wall going into the other room. But so directly underneath it, I like the view here. And then I started noticing that there was a reflection of the, the glass in the other glass going in. So again, you can see it more here. I really like this view. And then, you know, because I saw that reflection and thought it was kind of neat, I don't know that I think this is a great image, but again, I just thought I would try that because here, you know, I'm really trying to show off the stained glass um, and get as many different, you know, angles and things as I can. And you could say whether you think that's a terrible shot or, you know, catchy or whatever. But then, you know, you can go upstairs and get a closer look. You know, I tried to incorporate in because I really like the way these, you know, these different sections look for the library and that it's open like this with the balcony. Get the um, rotunda in there. And again. And then eventually when I can't think of anything else to do and I'm waiting for other people to shoot, I start trying different things. So here I zoomed the lens um, while I took a picture and I thought that looked really cool. And then I think, oh, nope, I thought I had another one where I did a multiple exposure. But so I like to just play around and see what I can come up with too, especially when there's, you know, bold colors and everything. So this is the newer um, room at the library and it's right next door to where we were. Um, and I just love the ceiling. And again, the repeating patterns, the kind of lines. And so with the wide angle just pointed up and made what I think is a very different shot from what you know most people might photograph in there. So um, different case studies, somewhere down right outside of DC, there was a conference here at the, I think it's called the Hylton Performing Arts Center. It looks like Hilton, but um, that's not a, how they were pronouncing it. But I love staircases, if they're spiral or um, something close. And so this really caught my eye. And especially so you have, you know, the leading lines and you have all the patterns and then even these different kind of patterns on the wall. So I spent a lot of time um, trying to come up with some creative angles of this staircase. So went upstairs and shot straight down. And again, it's not completely spiral. Um, I wish it had been, but I love all the colors too. So Blue and um, yellow and orange, they're opposite on the color wheel, so they add more impact. So really wanted to make sure to kind of highlight those as well. Um, get back a little further, stand up a little further on my tippy toes to get a little more of the railing. And then just kind of looking straight down the side. So again, it's, this is kind of an abstract, but it's really showing off, I think, what I found neatest about this area was just these you know, continuing lines and patterns and colors. And then even a part of the railing had this beautiful blue. And I, I took, just in Lightroom, desaturated all the colors except for the blue to really make that stand out, which is something fun that you can do. And then, you know, a lot of times things will look nice in black and white. So that reduces it down to just your lines and your patterns. another section from the staircase. So, I mean, if you were really looking, you could see so many different neat views, you know, that would, that just are kind of artistic just by kind of walking around and framing up differently. And most all of these were with probably like a 24 to 105 lens. And the really wide ones that you saw of the staircase would be with the 11 to 16 lens on the Canon. 
So um, on a visit to Baltimore, I was um, at the Basilica and we had some really neat clouds um, overhead. So I used the wide angle, and in this case, not a fisheye, but the 11 to 16. And I like to just point up and give that kind of, you know, powerful view and especially with that sky. And I thought this just looked better um, in black and white, especially since there were all these different signs and they were all different colors. It just kind of made it down to the elements of the lines. Inside, they had some catacombs um, down in the basement and I loved the repeating patterns here and thought that was really neat. I did think about trying to hide the signs that they had in there, but I don't think I've ever been kicked out of a church yet. So I thought I would avoid doing that. But just the arches and the repeating patterns really drew my eye. And I couldn't decide whether I liked it in black and white or color. So I gave you both. And then right outside in the railing. So here's one of the few where I used um, 50 millimeters and had the lens wide open. So at like 1.8 where you had, where I just focused right here on this front um, part of the railing and then it all went softly out of focus. So your aperture will help direct the eye, you know, to where it's sharpest. So you can use a wider aperture and, you know, just focus at the right place where you want the people to look and you can create some neat patterns too with, with different elements. Um, right near that basilica is the Peabody Library. And it just is, again, just really neat, um, you know, the lines and the different sections in there. So I played around with that for a while. And I think I definitely like a lot of these um, better in black and white. And again, I forget who asked me, but this one is very heavily tungsten lighting. Um, so it has that warmer cast to it, but I liked it better a little warmer than to make it um, completely cool. Um, and it's pretty small, just kind of goes right around the four sides around you there. So here's an idea what the library really looks like. And then looking straight up at the ceiling. So again, when I go somewhere and I'm at a building, I'm just really looking for lines and shapes, just any kind of patterns, anything that really catches my eye. And there you can see the starburst is a little different with that. And then right outside um, the library itself was this spiral staircase and this statue. And I had actually seen this picture um, from somewhere else, but knew I wanted to get it. And you pretty much had to lay like directly at the feet of this statue and look straight up to be able to get, you know, where you could see it and nothing overlapped through this hallway. And I thought this was just a neat shot. Linda knows I've sent her pictures of spiral staircase like I got to go here. I don't know where this is, but we got to figure it out. And then, of course, she'll say I've already been there, but I'd go again. So it happened a couple of times. Uh, a lot. Uh, so, there's a question that question okay. I want to throw at you so you can get a drink of water while I read it. Um, Mika says there you've got so many wonderful shots and she wants to know do you spend time on your own ph photographing these places or are these photos um, were they all taken during one of your workshops? That's a good question. 99.9% um, .9 of them they're all on my own time. When I do a workshop I don't do any shooting for myself. I'll have my camera and I may set things up so people can see you know the compositions and everything. Um, this past Saturday, because a lot of the people that were on the workshop had been there, you know, I taught hard for three and a half hours and then kind of right in the end, um, I snapped a couple shots while everyone was off doing their own thing. But I really just am focused on the people that have come to the workshop so that I can help them create images like this. So I keep huge lists. Um, which is kind of what if you read the blog post that Linda put up of places that I've seen and that I want to go to. And then as soon as I have a chance, I will go and photograph for myself. Um, in this particular case, um, I was on a workshop and it was really just a private lesson with somebody that was very familiar with Baltimore and took me to these neat 
architectural places. So does that answer your question? Yep. Sure okay. Does. So different building, I think this was called a men's club or something in Mount Vernon. Um, again, just a beautiful staircase and they let us go in just to photograph that for a few minutes. And um, I had never changed it to black and white until an hour ago and I actually loved that as well. And then when I do the black and whites too, I kind of gritty them up, you know, really give them a high contrast. I think that really just kind of brings them out. And this is a horizontal too, which is very different. And this one's even more like almost abstract. So let's go to New York. Um, so again, fisheye now. So I was going to walk around all day and didn't really want to use a tripod. So I had my little Olympus camera and this fisheye and came right out of the Rockefeller Center and um, got this so looking straight up. And it's just kind of a neat perspective because you can see, you know, several of the buildings converging. And then you can go around to the front. I guess this guy's Atlas. Is that what his name is? You should know that. I think so. Um, and then, you know, by using that fisheye lens, this church is across the street and it made me dizzy to bend my head back that far, but looking almost straight up, I was able to get Atlas and, um, the church right across there, which is kind of a neat perspective. That's St. Patrick's. Yeah. I was going to say that and I thought I'll be really embarrassed if I'm wrong. And unfortunately we didn't get to spend time in there. But um, wandering around and another time um, in New York, we were up on the High Line, which is a two mile path, I believe, that you could just walk around. It's really neat, um, elevated above the street. And this was a view from up there. There was an art sculpture there. And um, I just thought it was neat with this building. And again, I'm focusing, so I'm using a small, like an F11 and focusing here on the statue because that's where your eye is going to go first, but I wanted this to be in focus as well. And then um, kind of right near St. Patrick's was this other, and it, now it does escape me the name, I can give it to you at the end, but I thought this gate was really neat. So I just kind of did a picture where that was kind of framing this Christmas tree and then when we went inside this building, it was really amazing architecturally inside as well. And so um, just got a couple shots in there. And here's an example when you asked about white balance that I corrected mostly for the inside light, which was tungsten, which is why the outside looks blue like that. If anybody was wondering. So can I squeeze in another question? Yes, you may. John wants to know what HDR tools are you using to get the really great dynamic range? Um, he says, you know, your your images look quite natural. Thank you. So this one is definitely an HDR because of the darkness and the lights, but it does look um, very close to what our eye would see. So in this case, I'm just using Lightroom and merging them in there. The ones in the theater that had that little more artsy effect were in Photomatics Pro. And Photomatics, you can get very natural looking images. I use that um, for real estate, but you know, it just depends. But those are the two that I use mainly. So I don't know if anyone's familiar with this. This is the vessel. Uh, it's called the vessel and it's in Hudson Yards in New York. And it apparently is one of those um, art buildings that people love or hate. I personally love it. I think it's just really cool. So I think it was like a $15 million um, architectural piece that you could walk all around. So it's wide open. And I thought, well, I got to go explore this thing. So you have to make reservations and it's free um, and you go right up in there. But just all the lines and then the these are all staircases intertwining. Um, I just thought that was really neat. And catching, catching it at blue hour just made it glow. It was so much nicer than in daylight. So just kind of playing around with different angles with that. And from almost the top floor, looking down, there was this really weird blue light thing. And I really, for the longest time, couldn't figure out what was happening. But I think what you did was you laid your cell phone on this little platform, and then you leaned in, and you got your head and the whole... Uh, you know, vessel around you. 
um, I did not stand in line to do that. So, but and here's the, this is an elevator that can take you to the top. And then this is another building that I had wanted to see for a long time. So it was on my little Google Maps bucket list. And so here I am going to New York. I have to hit this. So this is the Oculus, which is a transportation center that is directly across from um, the World Trade Center complex. It's within the World Trade Center complex. And this is One World, so the, the newer building. So this was just two years ago. And again, getting there just at sunset and getting in the blue hour so you can get the glow of the lights was really neat. And this was with a fisheye lens, you know, just standing straight on at it, which I thought gave a neat perspective. Then when we went inside, so it was Christmas time and did a couple um, images looking all around. And again, I love just that blue ceiling and the lines. And then, so I wanted to accentuate the ceiling. So pointing just kind of up. And of course, if you do a horizontal, you should do a vertical because that gives you a whole different perspective. And then we went down on the floor. And again, I'm just, you know, infatuated with this blue, this bold color and all the lines and everything. And I couldn't quite get the whole thing that I wanted. So this was the view that I wanted. So guess what I did <laughs> right in the middle of the Oculus, which is a busy transportation hub in New York. I laid right on the ground and got the shot I wanted. And security guard was just looking there, shaking her head, but didn't say a word. So sometimes you just have to do whatever you have to do to get the shot you want. And then this is once we came outside and it was dark and just all the glow of the city lights. It's supposed to look like a dove, if anyone's not familiar with it. All right, now Linda's favorite. So I was going to Las Vegas and I had another friend that was going to meet me there that was very much into architecture. And that was part of what I wanted to do is photograph these casinos. And then at the last minute, my friend had to back out. And who do I call but my travel buddy? And I say to Linda, can you go? And she said, sure, I can go. Tell me what the plan is. And I listed out all these architectural elements and she's like, that's a lot of neon and buildings. Isn't there any landscape in there? I'm like, okay. So when she came out, we did landscapes. And then when she left, I focused on the casinos. So, and if you're interested, I don't gamble at all, but we did run up to the sign and get the oblig obligatory um, image of the welcome to Vegas sign. But I, I love the buildings, I love the architecture. And so I thought it'd be fun to go from New York City, um, the actual New York to here in Vegas. And to capture this, I wanted it at night and everything all lit up, but to give it that little, you know, different, maybe a little artsier element to it, did a long exposure here, um, getting the, the traffic. So the red is the tail lights. And then um, directly behind me is the Bellagio and we were watching the fountain show. I had gotten in earlier, so photographed it 30 more times before Linda got there. So I turned around and started playing around with the scene on the street. And I loved the Eiffel Tower, but there was also a full moon that night. And so I thought, well, I wanna get some car traffic as well. So I put the fisheye lens on um, and I'm actually standing under a tree an inch away from death. Um, <laughs> And yeah, you'll just die if you put your foot in the middle of the street there. So I just thought that was kind of neat and different and showed off the architecture in a different way. And, and then here too, so up at the Bellagio, I really liked, you know, I composed it so I could get kind of this neat leading line with the um, railing there. And then let's go over to the Luxor. So um, this is, you know, kind of what you'll see outside. And I thought that was really neat. So I kind of went right up underneath it and got a close up. I thought these two heads was kind of interesting. Inside, now I switched to my fisheye because everything's so huge there. And I really like this Sphinx and then just these lines. So, you know, that were going cross up into the, the ceiling. And I think there were elevators in each of these and they would not let me in them since I wasn't staying there. But um, I had a lot more images, but somebody made me cut them out. 
So when I got back outside that night, um, again, full moon, and this is right across the street at the MGM. And again, I was drawn to the yellow and the blue. So the, the opposite colors there, and then the patterns here, and I got right underneath the line. So it gave it this very dominant feel and then just kept moving around till I could line up the moon in there with it as well. And then wandering to Caesars, um, just give you this shot. So just, you know, this isn't the, like a normal shot, but using a little bit of a telephoto and, and um, you know, where it's, uh, combining the elements kind of closer together. Um, just kind of tried to set something up a little different and then wandered inside. And when I went inside, um, I just was really taken by the ceiling and it was huge. And so again, I had the fisheye on and was just kind of pointing up. Uh, so this is the lobby right where you go in to check in. And I was just then starting to try and play around and see what I could do with the ceiling because I loved the, the circles and the way the lamps were and then the circles on the floor little statue in the middle there. So let's try and, you know, try some different things with the statue. And these are all handheld because from everything that I read before going, you would get kicked out with a tripod. So I was carrying a little gorilla pod and for some things I might've snuck that on the floor, but for the most part, these were bracketing one stop apart. So three shots and on continuous drive so I would get them really quick. And in some cases, black and white looked neat. So again, that fish, I just, I really enjoyed that. I didn't want everything in, in Vegas to be fisheye, but I didn't have a wide angle lens that wasn't um, that fisheye. And this is over in the forum shops next door. Again, I like the stairway and the you know, the rotunda here, even though the rotunda had nothing but glass, it wasn't stained glass or anything. It was just kind of neat. So just showing you some different ways you might compose. And I did wait for somebody to come up the elevator to give that little extra, I don't know, draw your eye to it, little extra element. Here was a restaurant in there that I thought was very colorful. And so just kind of popped my head in and took a few pictures. And then once outside, you know, everything's kind of lit up there and I love bold colors. So, you know, this just kept rotating different shades, purple, blue, whatever, shot tons of pictures of it. And then coming into the finals, Linda, so you don't panic. So down further on the strip, um, the Palazzo is a beautiful hotel um, that has just really neat architectural elements. So again, I love the circles right out front and they're magnified obviously with a fisheye lens. So here was another one where I did take several images where I wasn't dead center and where I was cutting off too much here and, and so I do generally, to answer that question even more, take several different pictures because I know if I am going to straighten elements or move them, I don't want something to be cut off. And even like here, it's already just cut off a pinch because I couldn't go back any further. And then inside the Venetian Hotel, if you've ever been there or seen the pictures, you have this um, waterway and the gondolas and you know and you have the ceiling that changes colors so i just thought that was neat but again it's very hard to get the whole thing in unless you're using a super wide angle lens um, and i did want to have the buildings and i like the yellow with the blue going on and then just for a very different shot right against the railing i just pointed the camera straight down with that fisheye and got the gondola that was at my feet um, in the water and then you could see the rest beyond it and this is right outside of Peter Lick's gallery. So I did wander in there if anyone's familiar with him. They actually tried to somehow assume that I had money and I would be able to buy one of his million dollar prints. So I'll take that as a compliment. But um, walking around on the outside of the Venetian, I just love the columns here. And then if you look at the, the floor of the tile, you had neat patterns there. So it's just trying to do some different compositions that might incorporate those um, elements. 
and you know try some verticals and stack them up and i love where you had the light and the shadows and then just cut off any distractions from the walkway there and then now i'm kind of a little further in the building looking back to where i just was and i saw this lion and i wanted to include him and you know for composition a great element is archways or you know framing so it's trying to incorporate that and then again this is what you know kind of what it looks like from across the street and again with the traffic there because i wanted to get it all lit up but the traffic never stops and this higher one is a bus i just thought it was interesting and then another view from back up on top um, looking out across to the mirage and waiting for the volcano to erupt because that's what you do when you're there is watch that but I just thought it was real pretty and so I had to move around quite a bit to make sure that things weren't overlapping so that this pillar was not overlapping with the building and I got some neat um, you know composition below another view in this case, I would say this is really not a great shot because it's not very focused here. So um, I would have focused a little closer here and maybe stopped down a little more. Another shot. I just think it's so pretty, whether Linda did or not. I think she missed it all. Come on, are you jealous now? Um, no. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that, there's, that's a lot of neon. So nice. then I said, I want to go see this Gary building. I have to see this building. All right. She rolls her eyes. She rolled her eyes to go down to a uh, Fremont experience as well. So she wouldn't even get out of the car here. She was the getaway car sitting at the curb while I got out in the, it was actually pretty cold um, and ran around trying to get some pictures and it's in the older parts. So it felt a little sketchier. So it would have been That's nice. Why to have get out of the car. Yeah. It would have been nice to have somebody standing with me and my camera year. But so this is a Gary building. It's a medical center and it just looks really cool lit up at night. So just all these wavy lines, almost like a Ripley's believe it or not um, building. And Back inside the Venetian, I just thought this was a fun way to end. Um, this was looking in the window at this amazing dessert spot. Um, yes, I did imbibe Christy on a chocolate chip peanut butter cookie, two homemade ones that were giant with ice cream in between. It was, I had the shakes for hours after that. <laughs> so there you go. Oh, so how's my timing? Your timing was good. Um, I think I caught all the questions and I got booed by Jamie for, for making you cut out pictures. Yes. Yeah, thank you, Jamie. You and I told her it was going to move along. She thought it was going to be like five hours long or something. Yeah. Why don't you uh, stop sharing your screen so we can banter here for a second. Um, um, yeah, Jamie, thanks for that. Um, uh, there it is. Yeah, there you go. So let me, um, if you guys have any questions, this is a good time to throw it in the chat. But let me say this, um, Valerie, I don't usually like a lot of black and white pictures. And every one that you showed was really super cool. Uh, very dramatic. Um, just, I actually kind of like the black and white ones more than the, the, the colored version. So that, that really surprised me. Yeah, so. I agree with that. I'm usually a big color person and I don't think of black and white a lot, but with the architecture, I find that when I'm really focusing just on the lines and everything that when you switch into that, they just have a more dramatic feel to them. Yeah. So, so, um, okay. So this was another great presentation and, um, I want to thank you for doing this and, um, you know, whittling down those images because guys at one point she said oh I've got like 400 I'm like no you can't show 400 she goes don't worry I've got about 200 and this went on for like two weeks so I I had to like uh tire down just a little bit okay Valerie is there any I'm not seeing any questions but is there anything you want to leave us with just to kind of close out uh what you have presented to us just to, to give us some 
Sure. I don't know. Uh, keywords to think about when we are looking at architecture. Sure. Um, What's the um, takeaway? One of the, one of the key things I think is just to try, you know, work really hard to see things differently than normal. So, you know, everybody walks up and just has their little cell phone and snaps a picture from the same height. You know, sometimes we don't even look up, but you know, when you, you know, look for those different angles and then choose an appropriate lens that will um, accentuate those more, or maybe a telephoto lens where you're just getting in close to the patterns or something, you know, you really just want to be open to it and let the subject speak to you. So you saw some of them were wider, some were just sections. And, and I hope that it helps seeing kind of the process where you get the big picture, but then my eye gets drawn to this. And then my eye gets drawn to that as I spend, you know, take the time to really get to know the subject a little better. So, and, you know, architecture is everywhere. I, you know, I already have a huge list, um, which Linda also doesn't seem thrilled with for when I come to Texas, you know, and being in the, the state capital and everything, but I, I do love it. And I would challenge you to do something different. So shoot wide angle and get right up against and, you know, kind of look up, look for the patterns, textures, um, and play around with different, you know, apertures maybe. But I think when you're trying to get the whole thing, you probably want it sharp. And so you want F8, F11, 16, whatever. And don't be afraid to do something that people will laugh at. Don't be afraid to lay in the middle of an Atlantic City casino with people walking over you and staring at you like you passed out or something. You know, that's if that's the way you're going to get the shot, then go for it. Right, Christy? <laughs> you know, I've actually done that. And um, it was, I didn't realize that, uh, we weren't supposed to be doing it. We were on the sidewalk and I'm in front of a building that's probably a bank on a weekend. And I'm laying flat on the ground. My friend's laying head to head, our heads <laughs> backed up to each other, shooting up. And, um, you know, we got, I mean, we were down on the ground for quite a while. And once we got up and packed our bags, the security guard walked out and said, look guys, you can't, be doing this you're basically trespassing and we're like oh sorry I didn't know do you want us to delete the photos because no I was waiting well, for you. would you offer that yeah well there, it's something weird in Houston that you aren't allowed to to do that it's one of their little ordinances but he said no he goes I wanted you to finish getting your shots but just don't do it again but um it it does it makes a compelling um image you know just we were filthy laying on the, on the side. Oh, absolutely. It's not, it was, you know, watch the gum and everything else. Yeah, we did it anyway. So let me read you a couple of nice messages because it, we just missed your birthday. And um, so we can't celebrate with cake, but we can celebrate you with some nice comments. And one of the ones here is from Mika. And she says, I always learn so much from Valerie. Love the presentation. Christy, who's in uh, New Jersey, says, I saw more places that I need to visit. Great job. Um, Jamie says, the black and white on the Venetian floor and arches were spectacular. Thanks, uh, Don Simpson, who was our uh, presenter two weeks ago, says, Valerie, very nice presentation, really vibrant and eye-popping. So um, there's a lot of love for you in, here in Texas. So eventually you will get here and I'm, I'm super excited to, I will show you around. I'll show you a good time and, and we'll find a couple of buildings for you to photograph. So guys, um, let me uh, just close out by saying you can connect with Valerie through her new and improved website at ValerieHoffmanPhotography.com. And if you're on Instagram, look for her at Valerie Hoffman Photography. The Happiness Hour blog, community blog, is up, and Elaine Pruden and I have been working on it. Um, Valerie was kind enough to contribute an article titled, The Power of Personal Projects, which will inspire you to think of ways to keep your creativity sparked by exploring places that you've been meaning to check out. So next week is our 50th session, and I've been ending each of these programs by asking you to go out and create something beautiful. So I'd like to invite you to share one of your images that you've been inspired to create by one of our speakers or just something that you've been working on. And if you'd like to do that, connect with me before next week and, um, you know, 
I'd like to hear maybe the story behind your shot. So um, just keep that in mind. Um, my guest next week is Sherry Hunt, who will be here to present Creating Star Trails, and she'll get us excited to photograph the night sky. So until next time, go out and create something beautiful, and I hope that we see you again soon. Thank you.